Hi guys, my name is Steven and I just wanted to talk about how you can include Arviz into your GUI. Um, so there's two main methods that I've come across. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the Arviz camera stream package method. And what this does is it takes the Arviz simulation and turns it into a video feed from which you can handle um, as a normal video feed. Uh, the other approach is Let's see, Arviz Web. And it basically, instead of just creating a video of your Arviz simulation, it actually builds the simulation into your GUI. Um, this meaning that you can actually rotate it from your GUI um, and you can actually zoom in and zoom out and things like that and add features from within your GUI. On this other one, the video stream, um, you cannot, it's a video, so you can't make any modifications uh, from the video, obviously. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, clone this package. Uh, so here is my clone path. I'm going to navigate to the uh, workspace that I'm using. It's called CR Weld Workspace. Go to my source folder and then get clone this arviz camera stream .git. Um, I would do this but I've already actually installed it so go ahead and clone that and then you'll need to do your uh, cat can make in your main workspace directory uh, build that and that will give you your arviz camera stream all right so let's talk about how you use this arviz camera stream uh, so this is my workspace with all my packages in it so the only one we care about right now is arviz camera stream uh, so I think the first thing I want to do is show you their little demo launch file. So if I go to demo, um, I see. Let's. So we'll, we'll just start at the beginning. And I think I've, I think I've deleted just a few things out of here, so it might be a little different than yours, but basically the same thing. So the first thing we have, these first few lines, all they're doing is launching Arviz. So basically the idea is, if you already have Arviz launched and you're already using Arviz, you don't need to do anything different. You're gonna, whatever you're currently doing in your launch file for Arviz, you're gonna put th that here at the top. Um, the next thing we have we have is this uh, this camera one namespace and everything within in it. So let me just go ahead and go through what's within this. Um, this first line is a static transform publisher. So basically, we need the camera to have a location. Uh, with respect to our Arviz world. Uh, so that camera is going to physically have a frame somewhere in that Arviz world and we're going to define that on this line. So map is going to be our base frame uh, and this does seem to be a requirement. Um, I tried changing the base frame to other things like world. Uh, it does require it to be map. Uh, and then we have our camera frame. So the camera frame is a frame name that you make up could be Arviz cam um, and that's just going to be the frame for your camera and you might have noticed that that shows up here twice so I'm gonna go ahead and change it down here all right so Arviz cam the next thing we have is a node that we're going to launch so the node is the Ross topic node uh, and basically we just need to publish a topic that contains the information of our camera uh, this is something that is standard for any camera, like if you use a USB camera, you have to have this camera info topic. Uh, and this just allows other nodes to know how to handle your information. Uh, I guess the main things to take away from this line are the frame ID needs to match what you have in your broadcaster. Uh, the height and the width are just whatever you want to set them to. Uh, I don't see at the moment, there's no reason to change it from what it defaults to. All right, the DKRP, these basically come from a camera calibration. Um, I, I'm not too savvy on this, but basically I experimented. You can set all the values in D, K, and R to zero. Doesn't seem to have any effect. And then P seemed to be a little more particular. <laughs> so um, honestly, I don't see any reason to change them. You can just keep them as the default. 
This uh, binning is some sort of subsampling of your camera. Just leave it as it is. And the same with the ROI. So basically you can just copy exactly what we have here and what was from the, uh, the GitHub. So that was a, uh, our, our package for publishing the ROS topic. The next thing we have down here uh, is included in the demo. It's basically this disable pub plugins. I don't think we need that. Uh, I've already determined that all it's doing is disabling a few topics. And at the moment, if that adds any confusion, I'm just gonna get rid of that. So again, all we have is launching our viz in whatever way you normally do. And then this uh, basically just creating a topic that has camera info. So let's go ahead and launch this. So this is just a demo.launch that came with this uh, package. All right, so here's Arviz. Uh, and the first thing I noticed is that on my Arviz screen, I have two frames. I have my map frame and I have my Arviz cam. So this is the two frames I created with that static publisher. Um, and then there's a few things we need to look at here on the left. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just get rid of what they have, and then we're, we're going to recreate it, and I'll show you how to do that. Oops, I need to remove that, remove that, and remove that. All right, so this is probably where you're starting. You have an Arviz display, and you want to go ahead and add this video feed to it. So the first thing I need to do is scroll down to the bottom of your add-ins and you should see a new uh, plugin so it should be called Arviz camera stream and that came from that uh, package we just installed and go ahead and add this camera pub camera pub is going to take this visualization the simulate simulation and publish it on a topic so the first thing we need to do is specify the camera info topic there should only be one at the moment. This is the topic that we created in our uh, launch file. Okay, the next thing is, this confused me at first, image topic doesn't have any selection because we get to choose what we want to uh, publish it as. So I'm just gonna say Arvis stream. Um, let's see, camera one image. All right, so now we're publishing our simulation here onto this particular topic that we just created. Now that's all we had to do, but we can go ahead and uh, visualize that if we go and add our image plugin. All right, and so this just allows us to view any camera footage on, so in this case, we can view the one that we just created. All right, so as I move my screen around, you'll notice you don't have per se a live feed. Um, I guess this is a little confusing. You don't have any motion in your image display, but it is a live feed. So if, if your robot was driving around, you would see that. Uh, what you don't see is your lighting updating. So that, that's a little bit different. We'll get into that a little bit later. But basically here we have, we have our uh, basic setup for turning our viz into a camera feed. And that's the main step. So now that we've done that, I'd like to go ahead and show you what my setup is. All right, so again, I said I'm in my workspace. I already can publish a, uh, I can already publish an Arviz um, simulation. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch a launch file and I might have to take a few steps back here. I might exit out of a few things. All right, so basically, whenever I start up my code, this is the simulation I get. It's just a, a robot. Um, and so let's go ahead and jump to the launch file and let's take a look at how I created a camera stream out of that. So my launch file, I guess, is a little more distributed. So let me uh, navigate to that real quick. It's under Abu Destriction, Launch. All right, so this could have been anywhere, but this is where mine is. All right, so the first thing I have is starting up my Arviz package, or Arviz node. 
Um, and again, this is exactly how you normally would do it. In my case, this is how I normally start RViz from the launch file. So nothing special there. And the, the next thing I have is I have the transforms. These are the same transforms we just looked at in that demo launch file. Um, in this case, in my code, I originally did not have a map frame. Um, and it turns out that you have to have a map frame to make this work. So what I needed to do is take a frame I do have, my world frame, and create a map frame with respect to that world. And I just have a translation and rotation of zero. Um, the next thing I needed to do is create the same frame that we saw in the demo. So this is basically the same line. I'm just creating a frame from map to RViz cam. And then I have some parameters here. Uh, these I basically just adjusted until I got them where I wanted, and we can look at that here in a second. All right, so, so far, just like our demo launch file we just looked at, um, this is my, uh, my, let's see, my ROS topic node. Um, and again, just publishing a camera topic. And you might notice I changed a few things here. I, I had mentioned that you can set DKR to zeros. Um, you can copy this or look at this as you want. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, and then the one other very important step is this web video server package. So what we're gonna do is, and I actually talked about this in my last tutorial. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that camera feed and this package, web video server, is gonna broadcast that camera feed. So let's go ahead and look up this package. Web video server. Um, so what you're going to need to do is install this package. Um, and to do that, you can just use the standard approach of sudo apt-get install. And then I guess it's ROS. My version is kinetic. And then web video server. And if I hit enter, it should say that it's already installed. All right, so you install that package and then you need to include this line in your launch file. It's the web video server. So since this line is already on here, um, let's take a look real quick. So, so I, again, I went over this in my last video, so I won't dwell on it too much, but basically this will create a web address that you can go to to view the video stream. So this would work with a USB camera, or any camera, and it happens to work with our Arvis simulation right now. Uh, so this link uh, basically needs to know your topic name and then the data type. So if I jump back over to my launch file, um, I happen to have already created this. I just figured out what it needed to be. Uh, so it's your HTTP localhost 8080. I didn't change any of that. And then you're gonna, st it's string question mark topic equals and then whatever topic I create. All right, so again, this topic is created from your RViz, uh, and it happens to be called RViz Stream Camera Image. I, this could be whatever you wanted. This is what I happen to make up. Uh, and then the type, you can just leave as ROS compressed. So if I copy and paste this link and go to a web browser and paste it in the web browser, I can see that I have a video feed of my simulation. Um, you know, the one interesting thing, so let me minimize this a little so you can kind of see both. As I move my RViz, you can see the lighting change on my video feed. Uh, so you kind of want to leave RViz into an orientation that gets your lighting how you want it. I could rotate it all the way around and it makes it dark. So anyways, uh, you can just leave that in whatever orientation works best for your lighting. And then I can go ahead and show you a little bit of motion. So I'm just going to run a program real quick. And it just kind of runs through a couple circles here. But I see that my visualization has all the markers, it has the frames, and it has my robot in it. Alright, so uh, I guess the one other thing I wanted to mention there is that, again, we have this RViz stream camera image topic, and it's important that you realize that that comes from <clears throat> this camera pub add-in. So if I go under camera pub, I see that this topic I created 
<clears throat> our vis stream camera image is uh, what needed to show up in my browser link. Um, camera info. Let's see. <laughs> so camera info, let me go back to my launch file. All right, so there is one other thing I want to note here. In mine, I did not use a namespace. So I guess to me, I only have one camera. It wasn't important to have a namespace. If you had maybe this camera and then a USB camera, you would need to have them probably in separate namespaces. All right, so I think that probably covers how to get RViz into a video stream. Um, actually, one other thing, there is a handy link. Um, let's see if I can find it. Well, okay, I'll attach the link in the description, but basically it's the link that, um, where I discovered this. And now that I remember it, the link is right here. It is just the uh, roboticsknowledgebase.com uh, wiki slash tools slash stream uh, Very helpful website, and it, that's how I discovered how to do this. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is look at how to include this in your user interface. Uh, so again, I know this is a little different than my normal videos. I normally don't have such a clutter of code, so hopefully that's not going to be too confusing. But basically, I'm going to just show you exactly where this gets plugged into my user interface. Uh, so don't worry about my file path. Um, all I'm going to do, you, do is show you your KV, my KV file. Um, Alright, so all I have here is my CEF browsers. <clears throat> so if you remember, I covered this in my last video pretty in-depthly. Uh, and all you need to know is that the URL that you type into your browser to view the video stream needs to go right here on this URL line. <clears throat> and that's all you need to do to create a widget that contains this video stream. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and launch my launch file that uh, starts up this GUI. And there I see my robot. So I should be able to push play. Uh, and I see that my widget um, basically appears as a visualization of Arvis. But I can't move it around. Uh, and I can't zoom in or zoom out. Um, so if you did have the requirement to zoom in or zoom out, actually I can zoom a little bit, move it around a little bit. But just like you would a normal uh, browser window. So that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Um, so if you did need to move it around freely, uh, you would probably need the RViz uh, web package. And I'll try to make a video on that later. Um, I guess, you know, the one other thing people probably would be interested to do is just show a map. Uh, a lot of people like to work with maps if you're doing mobile robotics. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to Ross run a map server that accesses a map.yom that I've got sitting on my desktop. This could be any map. All right, so I just created that. Uh, if I go to my RViz, I see that my robot is now sitting in a map. <laughs> so this is just a 2D map I pulled off the internet. It's Willow Garage. Uh, and I just wanted to show you that this shows up. If I go to my web browser, I see that the robot's sitting here in this stream, or <laughs> in this map. And then if I go back to my GUI, I see that my robot's sitting in my GUI. So you can imagine that uh, whatever shows up in your RViz, if it's a 2D map, it'll show up here pretty well. Uh, so that's, I think, all I'm going to cover in this video. Uh, I'm going to try to make another video about how to create a live, or basically how to use the RViz web package. Um, there's a few more things I need to figure out before I make that video. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.